We'll be looking in details at the rising debt profile of Nigeria, standing at 87 trillion naira already, according to the Debt Management Office. Uh, now, during the World Bank IMF spring meeting that was held recently in Washington District of Columbia, the Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wali Edun, uh, said the World Bank has approved $2.25 billion for Nigeria as loan. So my, uh, my guest will be joining me now to actually take a detailed discussion into uh, the topic this afternoon. Good afternoon, Austin Adigui. Uh, good. good afternoon, All right. Good to have you join us this afternoon. Okay, now, before, before we start up conversation, let me just read through um, that paper before I get your, your side of comment on it. Now, the federal government says it has announced its qualification for a loan from the World Bank, totaling $2.2 trillion sorry, $2.2 billion. Wale Edun, the Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy, while unveiling this at a joint press conference held in the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, at the spring meetings of the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, and the uh, World Bank in Washington District of Columbia. He said the package approved by the Board of Directors of the World Bank offers a 40-year term with a 10-year moratorium and a nominal 1% interest rate. Edun stated, and I quote, if you look at the fact that we have qualified for the processing just this week to the board of directors of the World Bank of the total package of $2.25 billion of what you can call, and I mean, if there is no such thing as a free lunch, but it is closest to you so that you can get free money. It is virtually a grant. It is about a 40-year term of 10 years moratorium of about 1% interest. So this was what the minister actually um, came up with, the Minister of Finance, Wale Edun, that we are set to borrow again. Now, our debt profile has been standing already at 87 trillion naira. What will be the economic implication to Nigeria as a nation? When it's not actually going to be project high. Okay. Because I listened to the finance minister. Yeah. He said all the beautiful things. It doesn't have to be repaid, whether it's concessionary or non concessionary interest rate. It has to be repaid at some point. So, uh, but what he stopped short of telling Nigeria is actually the purpose for the loan. He only told us the good part. All right? Um, it's coming at 1%. Uh, there's moratorium. Is going to be repaid in 40 years. So we are preparing this loan for our great grandchildren. So the question is what is the uh, proceeds of this loan going to be applied on? If you look at our budget, if you look at our budget, you will see that already debt service as provided in the budget is taking up about 45% of our total revenue at 8.2 trillion against our revenue of 15.32 trillion. So that should actually bother every Nigerian at this critical point in time. Noting also how we've grown our debt stock without commensurate growth in our API, without commensurate growth in our uh, GDP per capita. So everybody has um, every reason to be concerned because uh, previous loans that have been taken and then built up for next generation of we still can't lay our hands on what this government or past government or previous government have actually done with those loans. So that, that's my worry. We're already on 90, 97 trillion. Bringing in 2.2 billion, uh, if you convert at 1,400, you have about 3 trillion. That means we will be at about 100 trillion in debt by the time this particular loan comes in. Keep in mind that in 2015, we were just on 12.1 trillion. Our GDP per capita then was 2,208. By end of 2023, we moved to 7 trillion, and our GDP per capita fell actually to 1,287. So are we actually borrowing to better our lives or borrowing to make matters worse? for our citizenry. 
there is no correlation. Okay. You said something about um, the time frame because I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're privy to um, the way the minister came about with the whole plan, how they intend to pay back. And you said something earlier about borrowing for our unborn generation. Do you actually now think that um, they have a better plan for repayment once this loan is gotten from the World Bank? Repayment will happen at mm. some point. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but what we should bother or worry about now is the application of that loan. Mm. They have since told us, all right, where this loan is going to be applied. Is it also borrowing for palliative for your current expenditure? In which case, we are consuming today and we are leaving the burden for the next generation of Nigeria. If this loan is project high, they should tell us, okay, this is what we have borrowed this 2.2 billion okay. to deliver to Nigeria. So that in 20, 30 years' time, those infrastructure will still be there. We, could, we can still remember that, oh, the, this government at this particular uh, period of time borrowed 2.2 uh, uh, billion dollars from World Bank to put together this infrastructure that has not created efficiency that has now improved the lives of Nigerians that have actually added to the productivity okay, in the system. So we need to know. My, my concern now is the application of that particular loan. Not how they are going to pay back, not when they are going to pay back, okay. not the interest on it. Because the minister stopped short of telling us the purpose for the loan. Nobody goes to the bank to borrow without the purpose. You must have a purpose to pay Nigerians okay you 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 said something about the purpose for the loan because i am pretty sure the minister di didn't actually tell us that neither did the um, apex bank governor actually say something of such but some, some from some quarters were hearing that the borrowing is to be used for the lagos calabar coastal um, project that they are actually working on because you and i know that the minister of works came out recently to tell us that um, um one kilometer of that road is going to cost four billion naira that each kilometer of that road and they actually total the sum of that money to around 16 billion thereabout so they were saying that that is um, some quarters actually saying obviously that's what they want to use the money for would there be any economic impact you think that this coastal rail from lagos to calabar is it does it have anything it's going to bring to nigeria as a nation um you were saying earlier that they didn't really tell us what they want to make um, exactly what they want to use the loan for so i was now trying to give you a feedback because from some quarters we are hearing that the lagos calabar coastal rail project is part of the reason why this loan is to be obtained from the World Bank. Do you actually uh, uh, reason from the same perspective with the federal government? So who goes about commissioning projects before uh, securing funding for that? Who makes those sense? Okay. Uh, if this loan is going to be applied to see any negative consequences to some of these loans that have been taken it's more like every administration that comes on board in Nigeria run either to the World Bank or to the IMF or AFDB for loan here and there but obviously the citizens are not seeing the impact of this loan do you foresee any negative impact of taking loans almost every time by the government okay the way the way in which the Nigerian government has borrowed 
recklessly, without commensurate um, growth and development in the system. You would always expect that uh, at some point, we might even be tearing down the barrel of the uh, sovereign debt crisis, okay. where we won't be able to service our, our, our loans again. If you look at the build up, in 2015, our total uh, uh, domestic loan was just 8, 8 trillion. And by the end of 2023, we moved it up to 53 trillion. So that this humongous fleet does not have any commensurate development on ground that we can see of things that are now improving the efficiency of productivity of Nigeria. So one can simply say that uh, the more we go into this uh, borrowing spree, Without any focus, the more we think the project Nigeria. In 2023, we spent 4.3 trillion to service our domestic debt, and we also spent 3.5 billion US dollars to service our external debt. And we are adding more. In our 2024 budget, we already made provision for 8.2 trillion naira to service our debt which is even higher than some of the allocations to critical sectors of the economy. How much is it that is actually needed to fully uh, bring our refineries to be optimal, to be functional? How much is needed to stabilize power in this country? Then look at how much we are spending servicing loans that are of no consequence in the economy. So definitely, it, it has its own drawback. Like I said, loans are not bad. They are just part of a, uh, a channel of sourcing for funding. And for governments that are very sincere, for governments that are uh, developmentally uh, uh, driven, loans are channeled towards specific projects to drive efficiency in the system. But you know, like I told you, you're borrowing so much and your GDP per capita is dropping. It's an aberration. It doesn't make any sense. In 2022, we achieved a GDP growth of 3.1%. Whereas in 2023, when we've even added uh, uh, about, about uh, 10 trillion between June and December, all right, our GDP per capita, our, our, our GDP growth actually in 2023 is we ended on 2.7 percent, and again 3.1 percent that was achieved in 2022. So this is what gets Nigeria worried. The data doesn't support, all right, the fact that these loans are judiciously applied for the good of, of every Nigerian. Okay. That's okay. All right. Now, the, the minister, why actually um, um, are stating about this borrowing, also said one of the means through which the repayment might be made is through oil revenue, which is actually our primary source, sort of like our primary source of income as a nation, because we are, we are just dependent on oil and oil and oil alone. It seems like the only source we get money from is oil and oil revenue. So the minister also hinted that obviously it will be from oil revenue that some of this payment will be made. Do you foresee a situation whereby um, whatever we are producing in terms of oil generation as a nation, that it will now be going into repayment of loan instead of using this money for the development of critical sector like healthcare, road infrastructure, and uh, the basic, you know, the basic need of uh, the average Nigerians on the street. Okay, so um, of course Nigeria is the mono economy. Yeah. And we are, our total export by in 2022 was 35 trillion, of which 32 trillion came from okay. crude and natural gas. Yeah. So that tells you everything you need to know. But we as a nation, okay, of course, there are mortgaging for future production of food. Despite the fact that we are not even meeting the open quota in terms of production to, to ramp up revenue, we are not meeting open quota, but we are mortgaging future production. Right? So, really funny. Globally, 
Normally, there is a serious talk now around, you know, moving away from fossil fuel. We are hearing about the electric cars, we are even hearing about PNG, and yet Nigeria is not even thinking of diversifying the way from food. Not completely shutting down uh, food production, but beginning to also bring up alternatives that will stand up in the when the globe moves away from where we think we are milking our honey and bread. It's unfortunate. It's going to be replaced from future production of food. Does that make it any better? Remember, too, that we took about three, three billion from Africa. Who is talking about that loan? Where did the loan go into? Where, what has happened? What has changed? So it's just unfortunate. See, like I said, loans as a principle in the economy is not it's not bad. But if it is wrongly applied, you will suffer the consequence in a higher multiplier effect in the future. And we are all seeing it. If in a budget you're you're you're, 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 you're providing for as as much as eight point two trillion naira to start it to your debt. Higher than what you're projecting for health, education, just like what you write in It tells you that we have a structural problem and we should begin to move away from this idea of every opportunity we have, we have our hands wide open, we are collecting whatever they come to tell you that it's almost like a grant. Okay. But it has to be repaid at some point. That's the problem. Right. Mortgaging the future production of crude is injurious to a mono economy that depends on crude. Okay. Now, let's tie this borrowing now to the economy proper, which is inflation. The National Bureau of Statistics came out with the inflation report for the month of March a um, few days ago, or rather last week or so. And inflation alone is standing at 33.2%, while the food inflation has grown to as high as 40.01%. And now we are borrowing coupled with the ones we already had before that has not been paid. Would there be any economic tie between this borrowing and the inflation rate to the nation Nigeria? Because the truth is, everybody is worried about the rise in inflation on almost on a daily basis. You hear them say the Naira is strengthening against the dollar, but the prices of commodity in the market remains the same. We're not seeing them coming down. So could there be a, a, a relationship or a correlation between the borrowing and inflation? Does it have any effect it's going to have? Would it increase? Would it raise the inflation level further or to bring it down? Okay, so of course, uh, we can always uh, draw uh, correlation between your high debt servicing ratio to your revenue and the ability of government to now also attend to the other programs that help the uh, stability of the economy. But uh, kept in hand, talk about inflation, talk about dollars, uh, sorry, naira spending against dollar. The inflation that we are facing in Nigeria today has always been cost push inflation. And since May 2022, the Monetary Authority has been intentional about using the wrong policy trust to fight this inflation. I said this in, in so many polls. We are not facing demand full inflation. This country. Yes, they may have printed a lot of money. They told us they printed about 23.7 trillion in ways and means. And I can authoritatively tell them that that ways and means, 23.7 trillion, did not get into the economy. At best, they have gone into private pockets the way it has always been. Nigeria is faced with cost pushing pressure. Prices are going up, not because demand has exceeded the supply of these goods, but are the critical inputs into production 
cargo gun up. We talk about power. We talk about import duty on on raw material. Import duty high in everything that supports production. How would your overhead as a manufacturer be going up and then the price be coming down? Exchange rate is just one of the drivers. Okay. Not the only drivers of Nigerian inflation. Mm, that's so true. So if exchange rate is going down, you're not going to even see a significant drop in price because if the rate is 1,000 by the number of businessmen and women who have also procured their material, Absolutely. when that exchange rate was at 1,900. Yeah, that's true. What do you expect? They will just wish it away and say, okay, this exchange rate is 1,200. Let's just pretend that we've got this material at 1,200. Are we addressing the energy mix? Are we addressing insecurity? Farmers are not in their farms because of the menace of banditry and uh, uh, Boko Haram. All these things, you know, will come together to ensure that prices they up. Transportation, for example, go and look at your GDP data in 2022. Transport subsector, road transport subsector contributed 950 billion to our GDP. But in 2023, because of the subsidy removal and all those policies, this sector contracted and contributed only 207 billion, contracting by about 5%. It gives you an idea of how difficult it is for Nigerians now to move food items. All right? Goods from one part of the country to the other. Transportation that ordinarily should take like um, 800,000 during Buhari regime now cost as much as 2.5 million. So you expect that prices will come down. Is transport not part of the cost of the goods? Remember that production is not complete until it gets to the final, to the final consumer. So absolutely. From the factory, yeah. these goods are coming out at 5 naira per unit. Okay. You still need to transport it. What are we doing with diesel? Why are we increasing the value of diesel? Why is diesel price going up? If we depend solely on these accelerated trucks to move goods from one region to the other, okay. are we also not aware that diesel is a critical input in that process? Right. So if you take diesel up from 840 to 1,000, what exactly were you expecting as the government that will happen? In any case, you just go take a look at what they are sharing in the past. Take a look at what they are sharing in the past. You will see the, 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 the jump in fact. So if the economy is contracting, activities are slowed down, household disposable income is completely eroded, effective demand has peaked, and government is making so much in fact. What does that tell you? We can clearly see where the problem is coming from. Clearly we can see where the problem is coming from. We talk about Naira distribution. Go and look at what was shared in, 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 in fact between January and June of 2023. And then look at what was shared in fact from July to December. I want you to take uh, 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 note of a particular line exchange rate gain line. What is this month, first part of 2021, that we did not even realize as much as 300 billion on that line for three months. We made it in one month in July. Okay. And for the next six months, with this the decision, government has benefited. Okay. Realized almost 1.8 trillion. Just right. about 263 percent jump within the space of people. Okay. So we should know where the problem is coming from. All right. The so, price of goods and services will not just come down because dollar is coming down. Okay. There are other things other factors to it. Okay. So as we wrap up quickly, we have less than three to five minutes to wrap up. What will be your advice to the government of the day? Because um, we are worried about this continuous borrowing. Everybody is worried. We're producing oil, but we're still borrowing. 
the, the, the price of a dollar per barrel now at the international market has risen to more than $90. And the benchmark is at when... As at when we were producing, uh, when we were budgeting the budget for 2024, it was pegged around uh, 78 to 80 dollars. Uh, so exactly. So now it has, but the price has risen in the international market. Instead of us to be making more money to keep, we're going out to borrow. So what would be your advice to the government of the day in terms of borrowing? Let's wrap up with this. Okay. So um, borrowing may be necessary, but let let go for. Uh, uh, project high borrowing. Okay. Let us borrow for big projects hmm. that will also support in the repayment. Okay. We must not we must move away from the era of just borrowing for comfort, hmm. borrowing to pay salary, borrowing to you buy big jeeps for the government officials. Yeah, they are talking about approving you know, two hundred billion of palliative. Yes. Yes. Two hundred billion. Yes. Where you are bidding for two point two billion <laughs> US dollars, so it makes no sense. There's no correlation between common sense and what the government is doing. Okay. No correlation at all. Absolutely. You're borrowing, and now you don't have data. So the two hundred billion again is going to be filtered away. Okay. Just the same way they've been, they've been um, uh, uh, operating mm. in the past. It's okay. just unfortunate. All right. Loans should be tied to projects. Okay. Not for a uh, jamboree or funfair. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that would be my own advice. Okay, it should be tied to project and not for jamboree or funfair. Exactly. All right, thank you very much, not Austin Adigo. It was, it was a great time having you on the show this beautiful afternoon. I really thank you for your insight into um, the issues of today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. So that's the size of our package on the show this afternoon, Business This Week. We've actually talked about one or two things, and uh, my guest has actually lended his voice to so much. If we should borrow as a nation, it should be tied to a project. The people should be seeing what the borrowing is meant for, not for jamboree or fun fairs, not for traveling around the world. That's the size of our package on the show today. God willing, next week, I'll be back here again to take you through. On behalf of the entire crew, those behind cameras, putting everything together to make sure the show was a success. We thank you for watching. I'm Lawrence Osifu saying see you again. Bye for now.